Hello everyone, welcome back! Also, new t-shirt. Majora Mask theme. Very nice. Anywho, <clears throat> so updates. Updates and more updates. Lots of pickups. It's again another jackpot when it comes to pickups. And I, I have to say, I do have one particular one that was really nice find in my opinion. So let's go over. So this one's interesting because the disc inside is not opened. It's sealed. Even though the box itself doesn't have any plastic around it. But in the boxes. Pretty tight though. This is one of those like wrap around ones. But yeah. Sealed disc. Now what's really nice this time it wasn't from the Goodwill, this time it was from the Samaritan store, which, uh, as most of my viewers would probably know, is usually where I commonly find a lot of uh, DOS games. Obviously this one, uh, this is probably not a DOS game, but some DOS games were on CDs, so that doesn't necessarily mean it ain't. But what's the best deal out of all this, actually one way, yeah is they were having a buy five CDs for one dollar. And uh, they do count the DOS games under CDs since they're computer games and they're really old software, so they just kind of let that count. So, obviously, uh, I was like, well, I don't usually find tons of DOS games. There was only maybe two occasions I found crap loads of DOS games. So, and... Sadly, everything's kind of a mess here because I've been reorganizing again. Now, this one's another big one here. The Mega Fortress. Based on Flight of the Old Dog, a best-selling novel. Obviously, as you can see, it's some kind of flight simulator game. And it is a bit hefty. It's not as hefty as the that one with the big books and that. But it does have... A decent sized book. Ugh. Got stuff everywhere. Sadly, the bottom part of it is breaking. Now it has a little paper about, you know, stuff about the discs and that. Then we got an install reference little booklet thing here. It's very small, but then we have a big fat wed book. That's the flight manual. And it has like imagery of missiles and maps. Like, I don't know if any of this information is accurate, but I'd say it has some nice details in there about that. It also has another wood booklet in here that also says Flight Plans, which seems to be in a Italian booklet of just solely maps. And I'm assuming these are all the stages. And what's also funny is, this isn't obviously the actual copy of the game. There is an actual copy in here, but it was also a copy of it. So, somebody made a backup copy of it. Now, luckily the copy of it says Disc 1 of 1, because at first when I saw that saying Disc 1, made me a little fearful. And then on top of that, we're still not done. There's a few other things in here. There was a uh, just a uh, warranty thing in here. But then there's also this odd envelope. Just a little envelope in here. And I haven't actually looked at this. I figured it was probably ad stuff for that. Yeah. We got a little thing here. Save toy dolls. Advertisement. Doll rebate. Joystick ad. Save five dollars when you get a uh, Flight Yoke 2000. Uh, maybe the um, Lazy Game Reviews might want to cash that in. A thirty-five dollar rebate. Wow, there's a lot of stuff in here. Five dollar off a one-year subscription. Power to play, power to save. Five dollar on these entertainment software. Holy crap, there's a lot of savings in this. Uh, ad for a mouse. 50% at Gaming World. A computer review magazine ad. 
for you smart software. Buy one of these PC sound and get a Vortex Music Chip Special Edition absolutely free. Free 200, uh, 230 and free software special offer when you buy Miracle. Miracle Piano. That that was on the NES, actually, ironically. That's kind of crazy. Thunderblade, Afterborno, Out One, Alien Syndrome, Shinobi. Those are all like Sega titles, but interesting enough, it came from this company, which if I never quickly is notorious for the Mario educational games. Did I drop something here? No, that's just something else. I thought I dropped one. That's a lot of different, uh, different little deals there. That probably... That's... Power the Poise, seven seven hundred and fifty dollar coupon inside the build the ultimate game station. This this seemed to be like a, it's like here you need a new PC back then. It's like here's a bunch of deals, but that's still not it. It also on top of it has a book that was in there, and I'm not sure what the relevance of the book is for. Uh, the Flight of the Old Dog. What the, what was the, let's see that, what did it say the book was called again? The Flight of the Old Dog. So you actually get the book with it. So this is actually the book. I thought it was probably like some additional lore. It seems to be just all text and that. Oh, that's, that's kind of an interesting deal if you're a fan of the book, I guess. I that kind of works out for you, don't it? <laughs> I'll go ahead and scoop this to the side. So we don't have to waste time putting it all back together. We'll move on now. Here, this I think is the best DOS one I found. I've never heard of it. And I had to look up the company because it didn't sound familiar. And it is called The Search for the King. Well, it actually has a little little extra part there but this is the company down here and I don't recognize the name but when I looked it up I recognized its modern counter part of its logo this my dear friends can only probably be well recognized as the company that did Busby the Bobcat what could possibly go wrong? Well, I would hope the DOS age was a lot better than that age. But um, it has some damage, as you can clearly see on the front. But everything else is pretty nice. And it from the back, it really, like, screams this whole Leisure Suit Larry kind of style. I love this one here. It says, he ain't nothing but a corn dog. <laughs> right there in the middle there. That's hilarious. And there's some of the contents in here are actually pretty interesting. Uh, on top of having like five million versions of this game, including big old floppies, like a lot of these that I like, they come with a lot of nice extra things. So we have the manual for the IB, uh, the IBM PC Teddy and Amiga version here. We don't really have any real art in here, mainly. It's just instructions on installing. And then, for some reason, there's the exact same thing. I don't know why there's another one, unless it's some continuation. Mm, it, looks, it looks like it's the same, so I'm not really sure why there's a whole second one. Because it looks... Yeah, it looks exactly the same. So they both say they're the manual for the exact same thing. So I'm not really sure why there's two of them in there. And on top of that, it comes with this, which this is a little odd. Because I have a paper copy of what was the DRM. But on top of that, I also get this, which is the actual DRM. Well, you had to use the glasses, and you probably won't be able to see this very well. Yeah, you're not going to see it very well, but it'll reveal the prices of the items, and I'm going to assume these are the same on the sheet. Maybe somebody, like, photocopied it, maybe. 
Uh, yes, the prices are the same. So this is this is this cheat sheet. So maybe whoever owned this made this. I don't know. But this this is DRM in the DOS age. I have only a few DOS games that actually have that stuff. And we got a catalog here for games. So let's look at what Busby the Cat's Cradles did in the DOS age. The golf game, the Search King, Alton Destiny. More golf. It seems like they were pretty golfy fanatics here. Sports, hardball, racing. Wow. They got a really big auto form here. I mean, how much was these? Oh, look, those Ace of Aces. That was one of those flight simulator games. I gotta find them quickly. Bubble Ghosts. Let's see. The game Harmony. Mini Putt. Let's see. The Search for the King. Damn, it was $59.95. It was a full price game. Damn. I got it for less than a dollar, basically. And here we got Strugito. Strugito. I can't say it. I loved the board game for this. I loved the board game for the game. Damn, they did a lot of like sports and golf simulator things. Day of Viper. Here we go. We're getting in some stuff here. The third. Ooh, this looks kind of interesting. It looks like some kind of mortal game of that. It looks like it looks like some kind of D and D thing actually. Because <laughs> it's showing them attacking a mummy. But yeah, it's mostly a lot of sports games in there. Hmm. And it looks like got a little postal thing here. Then, another piece that's a little interesting is this very little newspaper actually made out of the paper style of a newspaper. <laughs> I'm hot and I'm on his trail. Exclusive interview, I was the king's love slave. The king is alive. TV station offers one million to find him. It raised my consciousness and no more. Well, that might trigger some SJWs there in the corner. Oh, this is old shit, man. Find the king and get a check. Proof worth kill a cool million. His bizarre quest reveals the shocking and power and fame he finds. He finds his clothes at Kmart and he date in his dates at Radio Shack. Oh, they're name dropping businesses here. <laughs> this is crazy. Uh, dang. And look, and had for one of the games. This, this is kind of funny. You know, this is just some silly. I like these silly little additions to a lot of these DOS games. Let's see. Looks like we got a hint line here advertisement for the help the search for the king. And there's one more scrap of paper in here. Proof of purchase. Keep this card safe someday. When you least expect it, you may be asked to prove your purchase. If that day ever comes, you'll be one sad customer in the effort to cut down on your fouls. You threw this... So what, were they scared of the cops? Hello, we're here to check to make sure you didn't fucking copy any of your DOS games. Okay, you, you, you're cool. Okay. Okay, guys. He's cool. Don't worry. We don't have to massacre him. But yeah, that that was a nice find. Like I said, the game just totally seems to be a leisure suit railway kind of thing. And apparently, this game had a sequel. I think it was um, in Los Angeles. But uh, that was the only other game the main character appeared in. And uh, I do find it funny the wiki page did describe it as their attempt of whipping off leisure suit railway. But... Uh, this was a nice find, in my opinion, now. Moving on. Now, some other DOS games I found that I'm not as interesting. Silent Service 2, it's just a summer -ween game. Again, it's just... It's hard to pass up these things, you know? They're nice, big box things. It has giant floppies. 
and it has this big ass book heel. It actually has Koa Blue in it on the sides, but it basically just talks about a lot of the stuff in the game, obviously, nothing too much. Oh, we got a few advertisements on the side, though. But inside, we get some other interesting little goodies. Now, this looks like this was supposed to help you get idea of your layout of your controls or something, I guess. Maybe you were supposed to cut them out and attach them to your keys or... No, it, no, it's just literally telling you what all your keys on your keyboard does because it actually says... And it looks like originally these were two pieces of paper because uh, they're taped together. So uh, this actually might have... Yeah, it looks like it was probably scanned. So whoever owned this probably actually just made this. It's probably inside the manual. Then we got this, which is just uh, technical supplements. So it just helps you tell everything you need to do, you know, all that stuff. Oh, uh, looky heel. Wow, this is what remains of what looks like he copied, actually. Were you actually supposed to put you, this on a keyboard? I don't know, but whatever it is, he popped out some of the stuff. I don't know if it's the stuff that was there, or I don't know. So there's a little remains of something. Let's see. Looks like we got a map here too. Just a little paper map. And looks, oh, here's something that looks like it's from that pop out. Looks like we got ad thing here too. Ooh, it's a fold out ad. Anything interesting here? Let's take a look here. Tank platoon gunship. We got pilots. I got 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 got. Airborne star glide uh, glide glide or two. Kill your wick dangerous. And we got catalog here for these prices. Man, look, there was actually some that will. The Stealth Fighter, sixty nine ninety five. Ow, Tank Platoon was also that. Yow! Damn! That's more expensive. And we got some other stuff here. Honda coming soon. Star Lord. Music card. Spider-Man and Captain America. And Doctor Doom's Revenge. X-Men and the Punisher. Hmm. Well, mostly a lot of simulator games, but I guess what was I expecting from what was a lot of simulator? It has one of those has one of those cardboard things. Just to make sure there ain't anything underneath it. Nope, nothing underneath. We got too many two more papers. Attention Teddy owners, if you own a Teddy, send us your name, address, phone, and $2 postage and handling. We'll send you a Teddy 1000 keyboard overlay. And look for these great new titles. Let's see, Sid Meier's Werewolf, Silence of Us 2, The Knights of the Sky, Covenant, Lightspeed, The Punisher, Amazing Spider Man, Midwinter, Commando HQ. But yeah, be honest, I, it's not a particular game I'm too interested in. Again, it's just one of those sole reasons I got because it's just an old DOS game that's just lucky that my collector on this can't get over it. Now, here. Oh, oh shit. Oh, that wasn't good. A second. Oop. Oh crap. I sat down and it fell. Shit. I have to pick it up. Not gonna interrupt the video. I know where it is at least so I can get it. <laughs>
Now a lot of places. Now here's something odd. This isn't a lot of bad damage. The final martial arts eventual Bruce Lee lives. Now this is this is this is either a fighting game or an eventual game. It's kind of hard to tell. I mean, the scenery seems to change, so I would say it's pro probably a beating up game from what it looks like, but it could be some kind of fighting game too. I mean, it's old. Comes on big floppies. And the only other thing in it is a manual that doesn't really have a lot, but it has that notorious horse and wagon on the back. But that's all that's in now. Yeah, the box is pretty crushed in. Got apparently sat on a lot. Now this, I've never seen an EA box like this before, and it's thin as hell, and it's again another Samoine game of that, but it's on disc, and I did not check out the book because this thing's kind of a, this box is damaged a lot. See, we got a restoration card, and see anything interesting in the booklet. System requirements. Nope, just pretty much all boring text. Oh, but I did, list, I did see the words DOS, so this is definitely a DOS game. Definitely a DOS game. But I've never seen an EA box game that looked like this. This is very thin and small and everything all around. But the box is definitely crushed to hell. This thing is damaged severely. Eh, if I can get go back in. And again, I just, I was really going to pass on this one since it didn't really have a lot. But, I don't know, just something just screamed, come on, it's a unique box, just get it. And I was like, okay, fine, I'll get it. And that's out of the old stuff. Newer wise, let's see, first, let's continue with the stuff they still got out of the five for a dollar. So... Some other PC goodness. I got some Command and Conquer. And now I commented this uh, before in my uh, my thrift videos. And this was a Bell version. Like, not Bell version, but Bell condition. And considering it was five for a dollar, I figured I might as well just. So I have the case, even though the disc probably ain't as bad, uh, as good, but it still looked better than the other one. <laughs> it's the Land Before Time Interactive Central game. Oh, and look. Very familiar logo if you're familiar with cameras and stuff, actually. That's a bit odd, actually. Uh, Rainbow Six Wii. This was actually in very nice condition. And then a sealed copy of something called Safe Crackle. It's not even opened. It's probably not really much of a good thing either, but it was like, yeah, why not? Then the last thing, more in the modern civiliz civilization of gaming, um, a PlayStation 2 game. It wasn't in too good condition, sadly, but again, it was pick five. You no, know, the DOS games I was getting all the way, so I was like, well, I could get a few more things, and it was Seminole for the PS2. Uh, they... Original case looked awful. I gave it a nice new one. I haven't tested it yet to see if it works. If it doesn't, well, at least I have the cover art. And I can always sell the disc or try to buff it. And then at a pawn shop for six bucks, I got Afro Samurai for the th uh, Xbox 360. I've been wanting to get this, but every freaking time I find a copy, it's destroyed. It's awful. Uh, the booklet. The booklet's a bit beat up. Disc is pretty cleaned up. And it's original case with shit. Like some of the top edge there you can see is a little ruffled. Uh, the it's original case went through hell. And that was only $3. And this was in perfect condition but it does not have the back piece of its artwork. But the disc was in perfect condition and it's only $3. And I have wanted to find this for humor's sake. Celebrity Deathmatch. I used to watch this when it was on television. It was just absolutely bad shit, crazy shit. And uh, 
I've never played the game, so I don't know if it's any good. It's probably really not. If you're not familiar what Celebrity Deathmatch was, it was a comedy clay show where, where celebrities entered the wing and killed each other. And it, it, it was pretty notorious for a lot of weird shit. So, that was also nice to get. $3. So, all, all the games before Afro Samurai and Celebrity Deathmatch, I paid three dollars for. Now there was a few other things I got in those wall for my parents and my sister. Uh, it was a DVD of the first episode of the Care Bears. It was some special 25 anniversary thing. Uh, you know, my sister obviously grew up with Care Bears and Rainbow Bright and she now has a second kid so now I have a niece. So I was like, well why not, you know? Everyone needs a little Professor Cold Heart in their life. So, why not? Anyway, uh, that was for them. Uh, my mom, I found a... She loves the hide-and-seek mystery game stuff. And I found uh, one, a pack that had two games on it she didn't have. So, I got that for... And for my dad, I actually found a copy of... I believe it's uh, just Pac-Man Land on the PS1. I think that's what it was. It was an interesting uh, kind of mojo um, mixture of a platformer in classic Pac-Man's maze. Like the first stage starts out in a maze and then you kind of go through a level in that. And then another little part. And then more level of that. So it, it seems like an interesting evolution there. And I'm pretty sure I watched someone do a review on it. Because I've seen the cutscenes where all Pac-Man's family members get kidnapped. Uh, my dad liked the look of it. So he would probably like it. He doesn't like very complicated games. But he does like a little action. Like he he did play Tomb Raider. So it's not like he can't stand anything that's challenging. Because let me tell you. I can't fucking beat Tomb Raider. That game just wows my patience to be honest. <laughs> At least the old Tomb Raiders. I haven't played the newer one. I, I probably could play the newer one. But the old one's just not my cup of tea. But then again, Resident Evil 1 ain't everyone's cup of tea. So, you know, everyone has their cup of tea. But pickup-wise, that's all the pickups. Pretty nice haul for the DOS thing. The Search for the King was very nice to find. So, in other news, um, my last, last week... I'm not sure when this video will come up. It's the 7th right now. But um, the week before this, uh, I failed to have a lot of way into Historia go up because the recording I did uh, went bad. It did not record the audio for the gameplay. It was completely silent, which is a real shame because there was a sad scene in that recording. And now that I know about it, you know, I can't really, you know, I could fake it, but it would sound like faking it instead of my genuine emotion of the scene. So I will probably take that footage in the audio that I did, the commentary, just take that section and probably attach it to the video that scene's in, like probably at the end for anyone interested in that. Aside from that, it's basically being scrapped and I have to redo it again, which I will hopefully be doing today, so we actually have way into Historia going into next week. I'm, it's just, I've been awful with way into Historia, sadly. But uh, Bloodborne's been going fine and normal and that, and people have been saying they've been enjoying that. Aside from that, there hasn't been too much abnormal things going on. Too much aside from the usual not getting a lot of free time because of overtime. And sadly, in that which respect, uh, there's still been a lot of chat about the possibility of working a lot of Fridays until near the end of summer, beginning of fall kind of time period. So um, that sadly does not sound like really good news to me. And that definitely hurts a lot. Um, I recently got to do a bunch of streams. Uh, some were me and some were Aaron. Because during Memorial Weekend, Aaron came over for a whole week. Because he lives farther. So the idea was just to let him stay over for a week and hang out some of that. So Aaron did some streaming. Uh, he did some of his first time playing Bloodborne blindly in that. And we did a little of Diablo 3's uh, The Weeble, 
Weeble of Souls, or whatever the hell the expansion for Diablo 3 was called, but we we were still in the original Diablo 3. We didn't get to the add-on, but we got the PS4 version that comes with the add-on. You, you, you get what I'm saying. But, um... So, we're gonna go and do Diablo 3 in the few occasions he'll come over, so sadly, that'll be a slow process. Um, I did have some viewers ask I, I should get a schedule, and I've been rethinking about that, um... Originally, I've said before in the past that I wanted to do it on, like, Fridays. But, because over time, that's been kind of killing that. And then my next idea was to do it after work. Because, well, streaming's a lot easier to set up for the most part than, you know, doing the recording, the commentary separating, and make sure they stay aligned and editing and all that. Obviously, it's a lot easier in that regard. But then, you know, when you have a shade at work, you don't necessarily feel like doing all that. Even though it's slightly easier. But, you know, you're not in, the, like, the right mood when you are had a bad day at work or that. If anything, you just want to be by yourself when you're playing the game. So, that's... And in that regard, Aaron commented, why not just do non-commentary stuff? streams and well I mean I could do that but I kind of find it a lot more funnel to interact with the chat room but and again I'm thinking about doing after walk again because on Saturdays I do my thrifting and that and Sunday I usually spend editing stuff that I haven't gotten done and or clean my house a lot. There's always rearranging. Uh, this womb is an ever-growing mess, expanding, but can't ever go outside the walls of this womb. And it it's always getting shuffled around. I had just shuffled a lot of stuff on, like, I have a bookshelf that, in a few whale videos where I've taken the camera around, um, there's a shelf there that's starting to basically become where all the big box DOS games are when they used to be there, and then they got moved over there, so they're kind of going on the bookshelf over there, because there's a lot more space there, and it's getting a lot of things shuffled around here. <clears throat> and uh, I got the Final Fantasy Type-0 standee that I got, actually, ironically, to my left of the camera on this side here. Um, when it used to be by the closet door in this room, and that got moved because that also was well, a lot. Of, I had a lot of the posters laying flat that I get from GameStop, so they can kind of flatten out because a lot of them were curving by leaning on the wall. And now I just got a box and got them underneath my bed, wherever ones I'm not using up there. So as probably a lot of you noticed, uh, that corner has changed a lot. Uh, and I keep doing that here and there. I, I'm really liking that Bloodborne one there. So it's been there for a few videos. But I, I've been changing it out here and there. It kind of adds a little something to look at in the background. And also, you might not be able to notice, but the, the Mario's here of Osho uh, <clears throat> also got moved. Because they used to be more over here. And I moved them over because I made a whole new row of PSP stuff though too. So... There's, there's been a lot of rearranging going on here, and every week I always have to clean my house, because, uh, like, my dad always says, you know, you should just take a little time to clean after work, and uh, that's not necessarily a horrible suggestion, don't get me wrong, but when you walk in a horrible factory with horrible people who are depressed about life every single day, and they want to drag everyone to their level of misery, you just kind of don't feel like doing that stuff after work. Whew been having like internal hiccups all day today uh, also uh the person who did the neptunia interview video uh she is very happy about a lot of people replying on that video so everyone who checked that out and has replied to that uh the person who wants to remain anonymous in that uh is very happy about that and is actually very interested in doing another video of that so hopefully uh Something else might come out of that. Uh, aside from that, I do have some other videos coming up. Uh, I have a new Forgotten Games video. That should be up way, like, I hinted it at the previous update thing, so all of those should be up uh, by the time this comes up. And there was the, um, 
a new Forgotten game video that I did in a different style, which I want people to give feedback on that, whether they liked it that way or just while well, I'm standing here showing and blabbing like a nerd about shit. And then there was going to be the Harvey Boardman, a Tony at Law. Which that was going to be reviewed because I live streamed that when Aaron was also over, the whole thing we streamed that. And, um, I know there's a lot of Japanese RPGs people want me to talk about. I bought them, but haven't talked about them. Like, I want to talk about Child of Light. I want to talk about this, this... Oh, well, then again, Child of Light's not a Japanese RPG, so that might have been the bad, worst thing to start with, though. But, I mean, yeah, there, there's a lot of Japanese RPGs, and Child of Light uh, was something I wanted to give first impressions of, but I wanted to experience more of the story, which, again, leads into a time-consuming issue that we've been having. So, hopefully, I will be having some more videos coming up, hopefully, but... Things are still moving. I'm trying to still get stuff done. And I'm still trying to work on my opening video that I did a little demo with, too. I got a few more things I want to do with it. But hopefully, uh, by next month, I'll have that going live. I really am liking how it's looking. I just want to get a little more satisfied with how I want to do it with who I'm working with. So... Um, aside from that, that's pretty much it, aside from, you know, random gaming news, which, I guess, let's go ahead and talk about that, since this is actually a great opportunity, the Nordgasm about that. So, uh, first thing, E3 is coming up very soon at the time of this recording, and there are information about Dark Souls 3. Now, of course, the question is, is that information real? is the question, of course. Is it real? They look very authentic. Like, if they're fake, somebody spent a lot of time in, like, modded shit in the PC versions of Dark Souls or something, because they had new environments and enemies and shit, so they, they had to completely mod the living shit out of the game if they faked that crap. And I think they might be legitimate, because um, look at uh, Bloodborne. Bloodborne got leaked out early, and it got announced uh, shortly after. And EA's, I mean, uh, E3 is coming up, so, you know, I kind of feel like they might have potentially did it themselves. But, you know, the world will never know the answer to whether that was the case with either of the two games. But um, Dark Souls 3 doesn't necessarily not make sense either. Because the reason Dark Souls even came to be was because Sony owns the whites for Demon Souls. Because they published it and they did the deal like that where they would own the whites to Bloodborne. So Dark Souls solely ex exists because they wanted to do another one, but they couldn't actually make it Demon Souls. So that's why Namco Bandai stepped up as a publisher on that and... There you go, and of course Namco is going to want to continue something that's getting them money, right? So it doesn't make sense. It it makes sense on their end. Now with Miyazaki, the that's the thing that's a little tricky. I mean Miyazaki's made sequels. I mean Kingsfield has quite a few entries in it, but he never likes really taking place in the same like every single Kingsfield game pretty much takes place in a completely different place and has its kind of own little story contained in it with maybe a few references to towards another one of that. Ooh. Damn tonal hiccups. But Miyazaki has gone record before that he doesn't like making direct sequels. I mean, he doesn't like cashing over and over again like EA likes to do with a lot of shit too much, so... It is questionable whether Miyazaki is going to be heavily involved in the Dark Souls series, uh, continuing forward, if this is all true. Because in Nemo, in Dark Souls 2, he wasn't at the helm. He was in the background, overseeing it, but not in full control of it. And, well, there were advantages of that. 
they went and tried out a few different interesting things. The soul memory, a uh, new way of jumping, which a lot of people did not like. I liked using the L3 stick it. It was a lot more reliable in my opinion. But I definitely thought it was a good idea to leave both in it. Sadly, they did not do that for Bloodborne. You had to use only the original jump method. So that was kind of a sad thing now. But if this is true, I think it's good. Because... Bloodborne isn't exactly the same as all the other Souls games, you know. It relies on a much more aggressive dodging system because there's only one shield in the game and it's only basically worth, uh, worth anything only against projectiles. Really. Aside from that, it's worthless in actual combat. So, it would make sense to continue the Souls games, even if it's not Dark Souls, Maybe just a whole new thing, like, you know, what people were saying, like, make Dragon Souls or something, you know? A whole new universe and stuff. To continue the kind of defensive blocking system of that. And I think that would be an interesting way, but obviously, if they're continuing, like, the Bloodborne style, which we don't know if they are or not. I mean, Bloodborne might be its own thing, and they might just continue on with the Souls games and never touch upon the style of Bloodborne ever again. Who knows? We don't know. But if they do decide to be continuing both of them, it would be tricky for Miyazaki to be doing both or all. But, you know, we don't know his schedule or anything, so who knows. But I think Miyazaki will probably focus more on other games and probably not so much on Dark Souls, at least. If there was a whole new World Souls game, then he would probably be definitely get really heavily involved in that. But he will probably assign... Because Nemble Miyazaki is also the president of FromSoft now. Because of the uh, company that um, made... Uh, what was that game on the Vita? Uh, yeah. The company... I guess I should technically say the company that published in Japan uh, Demon Gaze for the Vita, that company there, they bought out FromSoft and they made Miyazaki the president. So technically, Miyazaki is at the helm of the company itself. So I would say my thoughts are Miyazaki will probably sign someone specifically, maybe the guy who did the main directing for Dark Souls 2, maybe, or maybe someone else. He will probably do something like that and continue working with Bandai Namco in that regard. And I think that would be a smart business decision why he can either continue Bloodborne or a whole new Souls Bloodborne or whatever he wants to do. Because, I mean, he's at the helm of his crazy company now. But either way, I look forward to it. And hopefully there'll be good news during E3 about it. But as far as now, it's just leaked rumor stuff. And you can look for the images with a simple Google search. But they do look very authentic. It's it, if, they're, if they are really fake, somebody put a lot of fucking work into them. Like, way more work than that whole Wayman thing for the Smash Bros. was like tons more work than that even was. And that was a lot of work, too. Okay, next thing. Uh, hatred, hatred. If you follow me on Twitter or anything, uh, you've probably seen me tweet about hatred before. And... You know, I planned on buying Hatred if it became available as a DRM free game. And GOG passed on it, which was a shame. Um, GOG has been passing on a lot of games. They don't seem to want, um, like, novel style or dating style story based games, even though they took the Pigeon Love Simulating Date Game. The Pigeon Dating Game. I know so all this, but oh my goodness, all the other ones, oh, terrifying of that. I don't know, but either way, they passed on it. I, not, I haven't been liking the kind of gating system of a lot of games. Um, I mean, the person who made, uh, what was it, uh, Breath of Death 7 and Cthulhu Saves the World, I never a long time ago, I asked him about DR and free version of his games, uh, which those, only those two games are available on Gamer's Gate, the store, not Gamer Gate, but Gamer's Gate storefront, and those are the only two of his entries of his time games that are DRM free. Um, 
when I asked about him, he said he did try to get on GOG before, but they refused him. And ironically, GOG replied back saying, hey, that was a different time and everything. We'd be willing to renegotiate and have him on here. And he never replied to him. Ever. And, well, GOG fucked up. And they're still fucking up, in my opinion, denying games. Because there was a game company, um, I can't remember what it was called, like Wolfpack or something, um, that has all kinds of story-based novel-style games. Some are RPG ones, some kind of remind me of like uh, the uh, uh, Long Live the Queen kind of thing, and then dating similar games like... This, there was a particular game I was interested in they had, and I asked about do you own free copy, and they said uh, they didn't have any. I asked them, you know, did you have a casilla, and they said, yeah, we actually casilla, but they refused. They denied them, so. <laughs> but anyway, I'm not here to hype on GOG's questionable choices of laying games that want to be do you free on their do you free store, but... <clears throat> Well, here to talk about Hatred. Now, Hatred uh, has came out. It's been several days since it's been out. And I did buy it on... Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to pronounce it right. Disola? Disola? It's like D-E-A-N-A -E or something like that. But um, it's DRM free there. Sadly, it's waiting on a up an optimizing update that the Steam version got. Supposedly that's going to come out tomorrow because it's not working on my computer right now. Which, you know, that's usually normal for a lot more complicated PC games. But, um, I can't really comment a whole lot on it because you know how I am. I don't like saying a whole lot on a game unless I play it. Aside from just a little opinion things. But from what I've seen video-wise. From what I've seen video-wise so far. It's story is non-existent. It's basically just Smash TV. Black and white and that. So nothing bad though. But the destruction physics upon the houses and buildings and stuff. That actually looks really awesome to me. And I've never seen that kind of thing in a uh, twin stick style game. Like Smash TV. Games like that will, when an analog stick moves a pulse in, you basically shoot all around you. And I, I actually think that's very interesting in there. And that's probably why I look forward to trying out in the game. But aside from that, there's no interesting story or anything in that. But I do question the decision of making it an AO game. Like, to me, like, the only point of the ratings board to me is to obviously associate the appropriateness of a game to, you know, your age and stuff. You know, if you're adult or not adult. But then again, you got social justice warriors who are like 20, 30 years old acting like fucking five-year-olds. So I guess, you know, it's not really helping much more. I've been triggered by mature content even though I'm an adult. But anyway, um, the game's violence. I mean, yeah, the main character is an immortal mortal who basically decides to kill everyone. Um, yeah, he's just a horrible person, but... People act like this is like some of the most despicable stuff ever in a game, like... Really? Seriously? I, I mean, are, are you really being serious that you, you think this is some of the most horrifying stuff you've ever seen? Like, I, I would say the deaths in both Manhunt games are way worse than this fucking shit fest when it comes to, like, violence. I mean, and those both got M waitings. This gets an AO waiting. Because... Just because, I guess. But whatever. Um, but obviously, I can't really comment on its functionality, if it's really enjoyable or not. Obviously, it's not going to be a story-driven game. It's going to be a carnage slash destructible kind of experience thing. So, that's basically how I view it at the moment until I get function on my PC and get to play it. Uh, I will probably do maybe a short let's play of it. Definitely, obviously, a first impression or review or both. Uh, probably just a review because I hear it's a pretty short game. And that would probably be my first complaint if that 
turns out to be true because it's like 20 bucks to buy the game on Steam and then it's 18.99 on the service I got for the DRM free version. So that's kind of pricey. That's kind of like the gone home kind of thing, you know. It's a really short game experience that's really overpriced. So that would probably be my first complaint if that turns out to be true. But um, I'm not really seeing the horrifying, terrifying thing in hatred. I, I don't really get the whole it's evil as hell like I mean Polygon did like eight stories on it even though they're like this game needs no attention even though they're giving it fucking attention so it's like if you don't fucking like it shut up Ugh. but uh, yeah I'll obviously comment on that when it becomes possible for me to play it which hopefully I'll be able to play it once the optimized patch hits and that but there's an off chance it might still not play and it might end up like Amnesia the Dark Descent. Well, I've got it and it was years later I would finally be able to play it on a new computer. And I hope that's not the case. Because this is the new, this game uses the new Unreal Engine. So it's graphically higher. So it's kind of demanding, it seems. So hopefully I'll be able to play it, but. It could be the sad fate. I can't right now. So I'll have to hope for the best when the optimized patch thing is. Because all the other things haven't worked so far. And aside from that... I think that's about everything going on. That's about everything going on. Not too much else. I mean, dumpster diving has been pretty norm, finding just a few things, like I found a copy of Perfect Dark Zero, you know, nothing particularly special in that regard. There hasn't been anything too special really ever since the Final Fantasy Type Zero standee I found. That was a really great find, I was happy to find that. So, not really much else going on really. Um, new games I'm going to be picking up. Um, there's a few Japanese titles that are supposed to be coming out. Um, there was one by, um, XC that's on the 3DS. I plan on getting this week now, because it's Sunday, so technically it's the new week. But, um, I'm planning on picking up that next. I'm trying to remember what it was called. Um, I can't remember what it was called, it, but I plan on getting that. And I don't know about getting Dark Souls 2, The Skull of the Four Sin yet. Uh, Bloodborne's still taking a while. And, well, to be honest, there's a lot of stuff I want to do. I mean, I do want it, but it's $60 max price, which is funny considering... And I, I, I'm not saying that's unfair. I mean, I, I'm using the logic that, you know, I already bought the game at full price. And basically, I'm just getting it... To have the DLC physically. Because I mean. The Skull of the Four Sin. For the, the original consoles. They were on. Is $39. So. I'm not saying it ain't justified. For it to be $60. But. To me. It's a little expensive. For what I basically went for. So. And you know. I want to play the DLC too. But. I, I think I will probably, because Bloodborne is still taking a little while, and, you know, I'm doing way into Historia, and I'm kind of debating about what I want, because I was originally thinking of doing The Skull of the Force, and, but then I just kind of got in the idea that, you know, I think I'll just wait for a price drop, at least the first price drop, just get a little cheaper, because there's, there's a few other things I want to do, too, so. And I've been thinking of making the next thing a vote thing again. A choice between some games. There's been a few games people have been requesting. Like, um, I got a request for Hotline Miami 2, uh, which I definitely want to do. Let's play that. So, I'm thinking of maybe making a straw poll with some choices of that. So, I guess look forward to that in the future. And that's about it, Willie. Not much else going on. Anyway, if you have any questions or anything, feel free to leave a comment down below. Hopefully look for the new content. And, you know, of course, Let's Play stuff's on the Let's Play stuff if you want to check that out stuff. Oh, and also, at this current moment, I am one subscriber away for reaching a new milestone. So hopefully soon that will pop up. 
And oh yeah, the contest, contest. This was Erwin's fault for coming over because originally I was planning on using Memorial Weekend to get caught up, but instead he wanted to come over and hang out on that, which, excuse me, if you hold that. Is there some cheese around here? <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> uh, but yeah, I don't want to come over and I got the names and stuff went down. I just kind of need to get around to uh, getting them all went down and chopped up and, you know, all way for the drawing and that. And, you know, it's time again, time again, so... I will probably, as an apology for it being delayed, I will probably make an additional wink for another digital giveaway. And I'm also thinking of doing just a little something extra special in the video itself. But you'll have to wait to see that. Those are still in the planning stages. But I'm going to hopefully get that coming soon. I'm so sorry that's taking so long. But we'll get there. We'll get there. We're going to have stuff to give away and people will get stuff. So anyway, till next time, praise the sun, may the good blood be with you, and may the rumors of Dark Souls 3 prove to be interesting if they do. Until next time, hopefully EA won't be a fucking, I mean, E3 won't be a horrible disaster. Enjoy, have fun. You want that postal, don't you? Ha! <laughs>